Lord be with you. Warm welcome to you all today. Our order of service is printed for you in the bulletin. Uh, a couple of brief announcements. Uh, the youth group is going to the pumpkin farm uh, today, and they'll meet in the parking lot at 11.30 a.m. Uh, there's a new Bible study that begins on Wednesday, October 27th at 9 a.m., and the details are in the bulletin. Uh, there's the VFW Fish Fry on Friday, October 29th from 4 to 7 p.m., and uh, the proceeds come to help us, so uh, you can dine in and carry out. And the Light the Night and Book Sale sign-ups are back in the narthex. So let's begin with our opening hymn, 915, Today Your Mercy Calls Us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended you, and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. 
upon this your confession. I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant to the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We speak the intro it together. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. O Lord, my heart is not lifted up. My eyes are not raised too high. I do not occupy myself with things too great and too marvelous for me. But I have calmed and quieted my soul, like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is my soul within me. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. mercy on us and give us eyes of faith to see your son that we may follow him on the way that leads to eternal life through the same Jesus Christ your son our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God now and forever please be seated Testament reading this morning comes from Jeremiah chapter 31. Thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and rise shouts for the chiefs of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, O Lord, save your people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, the pregnant woman and she who is in labor together. A great company they shall return here. 
With weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Our epistle reading comes from Hebrews chapter 7. The former priests were many in number, because they were prevented by death from continuing in office. But he holds his priesthood permanently, because he continues forever. Consequently, he is able to save the utmost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. For it was indeed fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, unstained, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens. He has no need, like those high priests, to offer daily sacrifices, first for his own sins and then for those of the people, since he did this once for all when he was offered up himself. For the law appoints men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of the oath, which came later than the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. They came to Jericho, and as Jesus was leaving Jericho with his disciples and a great crowd, Bartinimus, a blind beggar, the son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him, telling him to be silent. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stopped and said, Call him. And they called the blind man, saying to him, Take heart, get up, he is calling you. And throwing off his cloak, he sprang up and came to Jesus. And Jesus said to him, What do you want me to do for you? And the blind man said to him, Rabbi, let me recover my sight. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he recovered his sight and followed him on the way. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe, I believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn, I Know That My Redeemer Lives.
In the name of Jesus, Amen. Now get this scene into your mind. A crowded street full of people and cars and carts. People brushing up against one another as they make their way down the street. On the street corners and sometimes in the middle of the intersection, you see people begging. Some of these beggars have bandages on their feet or their hands. Others are missing limbs. Some of the beggars have deformities. And some of the beggars, quite frankly, are hard to look at. A few of the beggars are blind, and when you look at their eyes, all you see is white and no iris. A few of the more entrepreneurial beggars will try to perform some sort of service for you, like they'll begin to wash your car window and they'll soap it all up and it'll be sudsy and then they'll ask you for money before they wipe it off. And occasionally you'll see a woman nursing an infant while holding her hand out for money. Presumably she's a widow or a single mother without support. Some of the beggars will ask you, help me in the name of God. Now this is the scene of many third world cities today. If you go to places in India or Africa, it's a common sight. And increasingly, some of these things are becoming more common in our own country. And this is the very scene that we have in the gospel lesson appointed for today. While Jesus is leaving Jericho on his way to Jerusalem, a large crowd is following him when he encounters the blind man named Bartimaeus, which means the son of Timaeus. And in the context of this gospel reading, this is the very last miracle that Jesus performs before he triumphantly enters Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. So this is just before Palm Sunday. Another unusual aspect of this gospel lesson is that the name of the person being healed is given. Usually we're not told the name, we're told a ruler in the synagogue or a woman. But here, Mark records the name. The name is Bartimaeus. And when Bartimaeus hears that Jesus is walking by, he begins to make loud noises and calling out for Jesus. He cries out, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now this title, the Son of David, indicates that Bartimaeus believed that Jesus was the Messiah promised long ago. The Old Testament reading from Jeremiah describes what is happening in this scene from the Gospel reading. It says, I will gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, with weeping they shall come, and with pleas for mercy I will lead them back. Bartimaeus was crying out for mercy, and Jesus led him back. And when Bartimaeus came up to Jesus, Jesus asked him, what do you want of me? Now, it seems rather obvious that a blind man is not going to go up to Jesus and say, give me a loaf of bread. Instead, Bartimaeus says, restore my sight. Jesus replied, go your way, your faith has made you well. And Bartimaeus could see again. Bartimaeus believed the words of Jesus. He believed those words had the power to heal him. Faith is an open hand that receives the Lord's gifts. And Bartimaeus believed and received healing. Now notice that when Bartimaeus is calling out to Jesus, the crowd rebuked him. The crowd told Bartimaeus to be quiet. Now to this crowd, Bartimaeus was just one more beggar on the street. 
He was one more person that they just usually passed by without much thought. Bartimaeus was the sort of person the crowd wanted to ignore. They didn't want to see him. They wanted to pretend that he wasn't there. Now in Jesus' day, if you were sick, particularly if you were blind, the Jewish people believed that you were a sinner. You are being punished for God because of your blindness. And the only question that people had was, did Bartimaeus' parents sin or did he sin? Or maybe both. So Bartimaeus, not only as a blind man, but he's a sinner, and the crowd wants nothing to do with him. The crowd did not want to associate with him at all. And just as it seemed as if Jesus was going to pass Bartimaeus by, Jesus called for him. You see, Bartimaeus did not lose faith when it seemed that Jesus was passing him by. Instead, he called out all the more, expecting Jesus to answer, and he was healed. There is much we can learn from this gospel lesson. As Jesus demonstrates over and over again, he came to redeem and to save all people, even blind Bartimaeus. And if Jesus came to help Bartimaeus, he came to help you and me too. Jesus seeks all people, even those whom the world despises, those whom the world shuns, and those whom the world cancels. You see, Bartimaeus was canceled in his day. People paid no attention to him. They didn't hear him cry out. They ignored him. But Jesus noticed Bartimaeus and healed him. And after that, Bartimaeus followed Jesus. So no matter where we find ourselves in this world, whether we are the beggar on the street asking for help, or if we are the person in the crowd ignoring the beggar, Jesus has come for us. Seeing Jesus showing mercy to the canceled of his day also shows us how we can love and serve our neighbor. Another thing that we see is how Bartimaeus does not give up. When Jesus seems to be walking away, Bartimaeus prays and cries out all the more. He continues to cry for mercy until Jesus answers him. This is an act of faith, to continue to call upon the Lord when it seems that your prayer is not being answered. You see, Jesus is faithful to his promises. Jesus wants us to call on him. Whenever we have trouble, he wants us to pray, praise, and give thanks. And we're not only reminded to call upon his name, but we are given hope that Jesus heal, hears us and he will deliver us, just as he did Bartimaeus. Jesus shows mercy even when it appears that we will be passed by. So when you are in need, call to Jesus. When you feel as if Jesus is not healing your, hearing your prayer, call to him all the more. And it doesn't matter if those in the world think that your problem is too small or not important enough to bother Jesus. Call to Jesus anyway. He promises to hear you. When Jesus healed Bartimaeus, he was on his way to Jerusalem, where he would soon be crucified for the sins of the entire world. Jesus suffered and died for the sins of the world. He took on the penalty of all of our sins. He took on the penalty of the sins of Bartimaeus. All of our sins have been paid for. Jesus conquered sin, which causes all the sufferings that we have on this earth. 
and Jesus defeated death, and he rose again on the third day. As we sung in our hymn, I know my Redeemer lives. You see, the greatest mercy that Jesus shows us is when he rescues us from sin and death. And because of Jesus, we too will sing, I know my Redeemer lives. All that has afflicted us on this earth will be taken away. Death itself cannot have hold on us, for we shall rise with Jesus. And Jesus also understands the problems that we face as we walk on this earth, as we walk on the road of life, as we're bumping into things and stumbling and falling, maybe even begging in the intersection. Call to Jesus for mercy. Jesus will restore your fortunes. Jesus will make your path straight. If we find ourselves like the beggar, needing help, feeling as if everyone else has ignoring us or canceled us, call louder to Jesus for mercy. He promises to hear you. And when it seems as if Jesus has passed you by, be strong in faith. Trust that he will answer you. Faith clings to what our eyes cannot see. We are, in a way, just like Bartimaeus. We are blind to many of the things that happen in this world. We are blind to the reasons why things happen the way they do. And yet in faith, Jesus opens our eyes to see him and to see his promises. Our Lord Jesus has promised that everything that happens to us in this life will be worked for our good. That is his promise to you. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Amen. Please rise for our offertory. seated as we gather our gifts and offerings. We pray. 
Hear our cries and be attentive to the voice of our pleas, O Lord. For the sake of Jesus Christ, the Son of David, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, you have appointed us as priests in your kingdom, not to offer dead works out of our own weakness, but to offer prayers and a living sacrifices, made holy, innocent, and unstained by the once-for-all service of Christ, our High Priest. Make every Christian household constant in prayer and good works, since our Savior always lives to make intercession for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strike down the haughty, O Lord, of hosts, and every hostile voice that would rebuke the voice of faith with its cries and prayers. Uphold the protection of our nation and its leaders in honest service for the good of the people, especially that the gospel may be preached and heard without hindrance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, save your people and be a father to your Israel, the Holy Christian Church. Give courage to the hearts of all who cry for your mercy, especially Granger, Pastor Sakura, Brian, and Carol. Give them steadfast faith and be pleased to grant them recovery, that they may follow you now and into everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give eyes of faith to all who commune this day, that believing Christ's promises in his testament, they would discern the true body and blood distributed here in the sacrament, and so taste and see that he is good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, out of love for his fallen creation, humbled himself by taking on the form of a servant, becoming obedient unto death, even death upon a cross. Risen from the dead, he has freed us from eternal death and given us life everlasting. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drank it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please rise for the Nunc Dimittis. to the Lord for he is good. Let us pray. We give thanks to Almighty God that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Please be seated for our closing hymn 922, Go My Children with My Blessing. Thank you. 